Hey, good morning. Just sitting on my deck and uh, thought I'd share some thoughts with you. Um, one thing that I, I wanted to share was uh, why we decided to pay more for our electricity. Um, sorry, not our electricity, but our, our heating and our utilities in our house than our neighbors. And um, so this is a choice that we made for ethical reasons. Um, some would say moral reasons. <laughs> um, it's not to say, hey, look at me, I'm so awesome. It's just to provide an example of uh, something that anybody can do. Uh, well, maybe anybody can do. It depends on your situation. But um, yeah, I was raised by parents who saw the Great Depression. Um, yeah, there's a bit of an age gap there. And uh, they saw the poverty after the Great Depression. And they experienced uh, what we would describe as extreme hardship. Uh, they described that as growing up. <laughs> and and so in my family, there's this culture of saving money. You don't spend money unless you have to. You save money, you conserve, you're very frugal. So I've had to buck that a little bit by choosing to pay more for my utilities. And and you might be sitting there thinking, um, why, why would I do that? And, and the reason that we chose to do it was twofold. Um, one was uh, health risk, and the other one was uh, environmental responsibility. So I'll talk about the, the health risk first. Um, we have a relative, and uh, they experienced a pinhole size gas leak in their furnace, in their house. And um, that relative was uh, a single mom, and uh, living on her own, you know, she, she would lock up the house at night, close all the windows, lock all the doors, make sure everything was nice and tight so she was safe. Uh, and she'd go to sleep. And overnight, um, gases would build up in her house and uh, kind of poison her a little bit. And she'd get up in the morning and she'd turn on the bathroom fan and she'd have a shower. And that would pull the air through the house and kind of, you know, get rid of any leftover smells or whatever. And uh, so this happened like every single day for years and years and years, this pinhole just leaked gas into the house. And during that time, uh, she did not know she had a gas leak. She didn't know that there was poison coming into her house through her natural gas uh, burning fireplace. And, uh, you know, it was in the basement, so it just released a tiny little bit into the basement and kind of filled up the crawl space a little bit and kind of, um, you know, drifted up the stairs. And so she was getting like a small dose of this for years. Um, and during that time, she had all kinds of health issues that she encountered, and um, those health issues um, made her have to seek medical attention and have to take time off of work because she was sick. She couldn't work. And so you can imagine um, how someone who's on their own as a, a single mom um, would have to uh, not get paid to take time off of work after all their sick time got used up. And so um, this really impacted her financially as she tried to um, stay healthy, stay alive. And the doctors, you know, couldn't figure out what it was and the symptoms didn't kind of make sense. And, uh, you know, she was questioning whether <laughs> the doctors knew what they were talking about and, um, you know, they didn't figure it out. And so this went on for, for several, several years and had a profound effect on her health even to today and even uh, financially in terms of setting her back by several years of, of earning and uh, of course the interest she might have earned on her money. Um, and so that is one of the reasons that we've chosen not to have a natural gas appliance in our house and, and actually not to have natural gas. Um, just the idea of a, a completely bottomless supply of poison gas piped into my house that I'm going to burn to produce more poison gas. Um, I know, I know it's so safe. So many people don't have any problem with it. But you know, it happened to a relative of mine. So I'm not paranoid, but I think it's prudent to think twice about these things and to consider uh, whether that might be a, a risk. Now, this was before the days of carbon monoxide alarms. So I don't know if it was carbon monoxide or what it was. But, but all I do know is one day the gas utility people happened to be there and they walked in and whatever device they had went off and the man said, holy crow, get out of the house now. She's like, what, what? Um, because this was normal to her. She didn't smell it anymore. Um, and, and I guess the guy didn't smell it either. It was undetectable. So 
so she was poisoned for years by natural gas. So yeah, you might want to think twice before you pay for a utility to run a poisoned gas to your house. Now with climate change um, in 2017, you might think, hmm, maybe this is a really bad idea to invest in uh, part of the global greenhouse gas burning um, <laughs> empire. Uh, the other reason was, was environmental. So uh, when we bought our house, uh, it had a gas line to it and the gas line was turned off. And we looked at that and thought, that's kind of funny. I guess the people before maybe didn't pay for it or something. And it was feeding a gas fireplace, which we would use to heat uh, our living room. Uh, we did not have a gas stove. We did not have a gas dryer for our clothes. We did not have a gas water heater. And so the gas people showed up and they're like, hey, we'd like to turn your gas back on. And I found out that I'd have to pay uh, 10 bucks a month just for the privilege of having it attached to my house. And um, I, I since learned that's a municipal fee uh, to keep track of the pipes in the ground as best I can tell. And, and so that municipal fee that gets charged to the utility for having a pipe there just gets passed on to the customer. And so I'd pay a $10 connection fee for the privilege of the city keeping track of the pipe in the ground. So I said, you know what, it's going to cost me, through all the summer months, it's going to cost me $10 a month just to have that there. Um, if I have a pilot light turned on, that's going to cost me, I don't know, $5 a month in gas or something like that. Yeah, the math might be off. It's not significant. Um, and I just thought, you know, I'd, I don't think for one gas fireplace, it's really worthwhile. I think that's a bit of a problem. So, uh we live in British Columbia where 85% of our uh, electricity, maybe more, is produced by rainwater. Uh, it rains like six months out of the year here. And we have um, large lakes and canyons that, that hold this water and we have hydro dams attached to those. And in a very clean, measured, sustainable way, um, we can balance the health of those waterways with um, electricity production. And so, um, yeah, it's not like kill all the fish, I'm going to have hydro. There's there's all sorts of measures in place. Hydro is super clean, super renewable. As long as the sun keeps evaporating water and dropping it on the land, uh, we're good. And so in British Columbia, heating um, with electricity is a very environmentally responsible uh, choice. Now, I pay more for it. I pay 12 cents a kilowatt hour here. Whereas if I was heating my water and, and everything with gas, I'd be paying significantly less to heat my house. So in the summer, great. In the winter, uh, yeah, I pay more for my electricity. It also bumps up my rate, so my lighting and everything costs me more because I blow through the, the lower echelon first. And um, But I wanted to let you know about that choice. So that was just a utility choice. We just decided not to turn on the gas in the house. Uh, we pulled the, oh, sounds like a tree branch is falling down. Oh no, just a squirrel. I don't know if you can see him. I can barely see him. I don't think you guys have a chance. If you see the, you can see the swing rope. He's just by the swing rope up there. There he is. Oh, jumping on the branches. Yeah, we have a forest behind our house. It kind of shelters us a bit in the winter. Um, yeah. So too much rambling probably, but uh, I'm kind of new to this. So thanks for your patience with me. Um, yeah, I've got lots of ideas and um, I thought a lot about how we can be responsible environmentally in small ways. So hopefully this is interesting to you. Um, if you like it, uh, let me know and I'll record some more. Uh, share some of my crazy ideas about uh, being responsible and not getting bent out of shape about it. Thanks for your time. Have a good day.